makes me dizzy. Doesn't it? Does it make you dizzy? But there are only two times in your life that you learn. You learn when you're happy, and you learn when you're sad, Justin. So for the next 45 minutes or so, I'm going to make you happy, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad. <laughs> so that when you leave here, you'll be a changed and better human being. All right. So we're going to get sad for just a minute. 70% of stock market investors and mutual fund investors lost money, or mutual funds lost money in 2015. Anybody in that category? Those that did make money had the ability to trade stocks at three one trillionth of a second. That's not us, unless you have a fancy fancy machine. Out of 8,400 mutual fund companies in existence, only 4% of them actually made a profit over the last 10 years. Is that scary or what? People say, oh, I'm going to put my money in stocks. It's safe. I'll put my money in mutual funds. It's safe. No, it's not. It's not. No, it's not. Quit lying to yourself. The average investor lost 6% on their investment accounts last year, according to Bloomberg. Um, you know, we all talk about oil and where it is and where it's going. It's crazy. For real estate, only 13 major areas saw an increase in real estate values in our country in 2015. Four of them are oil-based states. Real estate, this is interesting. Remember what I was talking about percentages. Real estate appreciated as a whole 3% for the year. Now, are there opportunities to make money in real estate? Yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Let me ask you, the really savvy investors who've been here done that, Will there be some amazing opportunities to make money in real estate in about two to three years? Yes. Woo, baby. Wouldn't you like to have a big pot of cash when the deals are out there to be able to go out and take advantage of those deals? I'm going to show you how to build up that pot of cash. Okay. So real estate inflation, the actual cost of goods was over 6% in the U.S. And if you didn't make 6% tax-free or if you're affected by the, and, <clears throat> excuse me, affected by the taxes, 9% tax-deferred, then you lost money last year, okay? So happy, sad, happy, sad. So let's talk about those. Market volatility. The stock market has averaged a correction of 33.8% every eight years since 1946. The last time it happened was in 08. What year is this? 16. Who can do the math? <laughs> All right, it's coming. It's going to happen. We've had, how many of you got hit in January? Anybody, any honest people in the room? All right. <laughs> how many of you got I mean, I, you know, I talked to a guy the other day. He said I lost 110K January, first five days of the year. Boom. Gone. Mm. So things happen, right? <laughs> There's one over above New York, New York, right? Um, I just came from uh, Los Angeles. You know, you got Disney World and all that out there. Roller coasters are fun at an amusement park. As an investment, not so much, right? So the volatility of the market does endanger investors. And the problem that we've known this for years is investors make emotional decisions a lot of times. And when it's really scary, they start jumping out. And when it looks really good, they start jumping in. And that's exactly opposite of what they should be doing. But unfortunately, a lot of folks do that. These are other people's facts, not mine. 80% stock market crash strike in 2016, they warned. Bank of America says U.S. Home prices will fall in 2017, yep. and on and on and on and on and on. So, this was in January of this year. One trillion erased from stock so far, 2016. That was in the first about 10 or 11 days, something like that, of the year. This was on the 12th of January. Stock traders home access. So goes January, so goes the rest of the year. Things are happening. We're in an election year. Following an election year, it, economically, it's, it's predictable that things are going to be impacted and affected. I don't care who you're voting for. It doesn't matter. <laughs> My Uber driver last night tried to nail me down, and, and I did just like all of them with the debate. I diverted and pivoted, and <laughs> I did not talk about that. <laughs> Investing in perception versus reality. I want to talk about something. In 9-11, when 9-11 happened, some awful things happened in our country. 9-12, there were two things you could not do. You could not get on a plane, and you could not trade stocks. That's it. Everybody can get up, brush their teeth, go to work, buy stuff, have stuff, invest in stuff, do stuff. But the markets were impacted. Why? Because perception. Perception. It's pretty scary. The other day, um, who was it that was looking at it? It was looking at buying Twitter. Somebody remember? I said LinkedIn the other day and it wasn't LinkedIn, it was somebody else. There. Salesforce. Salesforce, thank you very much. So Salesforce was looking at buying Twitter and took a pass, right? What happened? Salesforce stock went up 5 or 6%, Twitter's went down 5 or 6%. So, 
So anytime your livelihood, your investment, your future can be impacted with a press release, that's pretty scary. So market volatility. Number two, professionals. I'm going to move quickly. I do like this one, though. Warren Buffett said, there are few investment managers, of course, who are very good, though in the short run it's difficult to determine whether a great record is due to luck or talent. Most advisors, however, are far better at generating high fees than they are at generating high returns. In truth, their core competency is not investing, it's salesmanship. They know, that's right, 